get to know you So much to get through, body and a mind too <laughs> Generally, the man is still expected to take the first step I mean, this is like the society we grew up in. You know, the man has to kind of chase and shower with compliments. Ich habe das nie so gesehen, dass es irgendwie eine Geschlechterrolle gibt. Hey, der Mann muss schreiben oder ähm, der Mann muss die Frau ausführen oder sonst irgendwas. Ich bin generell eine Person, die oft den ersten Schritt macht. Ich glaube, Männer freuen sich auch oft darüber, weil von ihnen ja meistens erwartet wird, dass sie den ersten Schritt machen, das Gespräch am Laufen halten. Ja, also wenn sie mir schreiben will, go for it. Immer gerne. <lacht> so, about that first step. Let's quickly touch base on traditional gender roles and dating expectations. For decades, society has taught us that the men must ask the woman out, initiate the first kiss, pay for the meal, and do the proposing. This is called the romance gap, a term coined by Bumble, the women message first app. This gap describes the discrepancy often expected in heterosexual couples. If it's not a level playing field from the start, the relationship dynamic might be unfairly influenced by gender expectations. For example, regarding childcare, emotional labor, and domestic chores. Become aware of which role you play in dating and relationships. And remember, you get to decide who takes the lead and when. And how do you initiate that conversation? Well, sometimes I just go, hey, how's it going? <laughs> I'm basic. Hey, how are you? What's up? I'm not going to put all this effort for you not to reply to me because now I'm upset. Bei einer ersten Nachricht um, beziehe ich mich manchmal auf den Text, wenn irgendwas ist, was mir auffällt, was ich super interessant finde oder wo wir Gemeinsamkeiten haben. Oh, that looks really nice. Like, where are you surfing? Or, oh, that's really cool. I've never tried that. What is that like? Hi, Jenny. You have very strong eyes. I can have eye contact with, uh, with you forever. Have you ever tried it before? And if yes, for how long? And the answers are very different. Yes, I tried it. Yes, I'm a professional. Yes, you will lose. Wow, this is a good idea. I've never done it, but I'm willing to try it. So if someone's like, you're beautiful, or like, nice, beautiful photos, I'm like, mmm, of course it's nice, but it also feels very insincere. So I think when people write something that's a little more thoughtful, like maybe about my profile and ask me something, then I'm more inclined to want to continue a conversation. Like I've had people say hi to me, I say hey back or hi back, and they say hi again, I'm blocking you. What are we doing here? Like, what are we doing? Hi, hi. Like, no, like, you messaged me with me. You should have had some type of conversation ready. Here are some do's and don'ts when it comes to sending the first message. Don't open with hi or hello. Doing this can be hard for someone to work with. Stay away from copy-paste messages. It's often very obvious and feels disingenuous. Be personable. Your intention here is to find out if A, the profile is active, and B, whether they're open to chatting with you. Keep it short and sweet. Stick to one to two sentences that are open and friendly. Here are two examples of what energy you could bring to your first message. I can't believe you made me write first. I see you're into cupcakes, but have you ever tried s'mores? people do you write with at the same time oh i know you won't i know you won't approve of this lily like <laughs> i would say on every probably like two to three people i write all the ones that fall within the criteria like they are close enough they look attractive so i write it so i can be writing up to five or i don't know uh, so there's still no commitment. So I'll just get like a bunch of matches and I'll just like write all of them very quickly and then just have like this whole thing in my inbox and then just be like, all right, let's see who writes back. And then maybe only like 
two or three people right back. Wenn ich sagen würde, ich konzentriere mich immer nur auf eine Person, dann ähm, habe ich gar keine Möglichkeit, irgendwie mit anderen zu interagieren. I will write with many people that talk to me that you know wants to talk to me. So if there's ten people that want to talk to me, I will write with all ten of them. Wenn man parallel die Gespräche zueinander führt, ist es halt immer schwer, wenn es zu viele sind, dass man das auch den richtigen Personen zuordnet. <lacht> Sometimes you talk to people and you're talking to multiple people, you realize like, oh, y'all would be so good for each other. You like you want them to kind of meet each other, but then that then becomes awkward because like. I'm not tender, like that's not my job to be a matchmaker. From my experience so far, I have spent like a year online dating and I did try few different things. People are also so burnt and jaded from like prior um, experiences both ways. No one really wants to put in effort into, you know, committing and showing somebody that they like can care for them or that they can uh, surprise them and put effort into it. When there are so many other people they have to put effort into again and again and again and again. The general vibe I got so far was that it's not for something serious. I just noticed that every single one has a different intention. I don't go into it with, I'm going to find the perfect match today. And I think it's just because I've been let down so many times, it's like, why get my hopes up to be let down? So how do you know if the person you are investing your time and energy into will be worth it? Truth is, you don't. Some people will be on there for fun, something casual, or personal gratification. But if you're looking for something more meaningful, let's keep your eye on a few factors. Are they asking relevant and engaging questions? What is their response time? How regular is the communication? How willing to meet are they? How long are their messages? The Kang sisters found that successful daters who ended up in relationships had messages that were double the length of those who remained single. With all that in mind, be comfortable with filtering out any matches who are unavailable, unclear, slow to reply, sending short replies, not asking questions back, pushing your boundaries when it comes to meeting up, or show flaky behavior. We did talk throughout the day. And it wasn't like those like intense horned up talk, you know, because it was still friendly vibe. Literally connecting with someone, getting to know them without giving out everything over text so we have something to talk about when we finally meet in person. Er hat mich jeden Tag gefragt, hey, wie geht's dir? Wie war dein Tag? Und so hat das Ganze dann tatsächlich begonnen und dann in so einen ganz entspannten Schreibeflow ist es übergegangen. When it comes to moving from online to offline, I prefer someone who asks me out on a date. Gehen wir essen? <laughs> Oder Bock auf spazieren gehen oder sonst irgendwas. Also auch ziemlich simpel gehalten bei mir. Online dating question, when I'm really like you and I'm really serious about you, like what is an ideal date? I usually shoot for the date first. And if she's reluctant, then I propose the video call or the phone call. She is interacting with me directly. She hears my voice. She sees my facial expressions. I also do. So she has an idea of who she is talking to, a real person. For some people, going on a date can be a nerve-wracking experience. So you might want to consider taking a few small steps beforehand. This could be exchanging phone numbers, taking the conversation to another app, sending voice notes, having a phone call, or even a video call. When you both feel comfortable enough to go on a date, you may want to consider giving it a certain time frame. The one-hour date gives you the opportunity to be more in control of the situation. If it's a good date, this creates even more anticipation for the next one. If it's not, there wasn't much time and energy wasted. Win-win. But first things first, how do you even ask a person out? Here are some ways to do it. I was thinking, since you like art, how about we check out this cool new exhibition? 
I'd love to get to know you more while exploring this neighborhood. Are you interested? You mentioned a cool restaurant you've wanted to go to. Would you want to go together?